Longfellow wrote a poem entitled The Old Clock on the Stairs. It symbolizes the stairs of our own ascent and until we, until we reach eternity, it marks the time and the hours. He took it from a quote by Jacques Bouidain, which is written in French, and I'll read it to you. L'éternité est une pendule dont le balancier dit et redit sans cesse ces deux mots seulement dans le silence des tombeaux. Toujours, jamais, jamais, toujours. From that little verse, which means that eternity is like a clock of which the pendulum says and re-says without ceasing these two words only in the silence of the tombs. Always, never. Never, always. And so, Lanello took up those words and he wrote this poem. Somewhat back from the village street stands the old-fashioned country seat. Across its antique portico, tall poplar trees their shadows throw. And from its station in the hall, an ancient timepiece says to all, forever, never, never forever. Halfway up the stairs it stands and points and beckons with its hands from its case of massive oak, like a monk who under his cloak crosses himself and sighs alas with sorrowful voice to all who pass forever, never, never forever. By day its voice is low and light, but in the silent dead of night, distinct as a passing footsteps fall, it echoes along the vacant hall, along the ceiling, along the floor, and seems to say at each chamber door, forever, never never forever. Through days of sorrow and of mirth, through days of death and days of birth, through every swift vicissitude of changeful time, unchanged it has stood. And as if like God it all things saw, it calmly repeats those words of awe forever. Never, never forever. In that mansion used to be free-hearted hospitality. His great fires up the chimney roared. The stranger feasted at his board. But like the skeleton at the feast, that warning timepiece never ceased. Forever, never, never forever. Their groups of merry children played, their youths and maidens dreaming strayed. O oh, precious hours, O oh, golden prime, and affluence of love and time. Even as a miser counts his gold, those hours the ancient timepiece told. Forever, never, never forever. From that chamber clothed in white, the bride came forth on her wedding night. There in that silent room below, the dead lay in his shroud of snow, and in the hush that followed the prayer was heard the old clock on the stair. Forever, never, never, forever. All are scattered now and fled. Some are married, some are dead. And when I ask with throbs of pain, ah, when shall they all meet again? As in the days long since gone by, the ancient timepiece makes reply, forever, never, never forever. 
never here, forever there, where all parting pain and care and death and time shall disappear, forever there, but never here. The Orologe of Eternity saith this incessantly, forever, never, never, forever. And so the message of our beloved Lanello is that we meet forever there in eternity. But that eternity is not a place to which we go. It's the cosmic consciousness I know. Here and now we are one and there is no parting. Never here in time and space consciousness. So long as we dwell in time and space which are unreal, we shall never meet the saints beyond the veil. But when we know that here and now is eternity, then we are bound by the forever vow. And this is our vow of love. This wonderful message of Lanello is for our celebration at this feast of the eighth ray of his ascension. It's for the celebration of the union of our twin flames by the mighty figure eight flow, by the ruby ray of the figure eight. We are sealed in our twin flame causal bodies it is a year for the opening of the way of the heart of the ever-present guru so that the heart of you and your twin flame may be one. We do not dwell so much upon the mystical union of twin flames in our conversation or in our prayers because we are so busy accelerating, becoming one with a Christ consciousness and having the initiations of the heart the magnanimous heart of Lanello, which makes us God self-conscious instead of self-conscious of the lesser self. But here upon this Ascension Day is truly the dispensation of his mantle. And that dispensation is for the greater union of each of us with our twin flame. The drawing nearer of your soul to your mighty I am presence and of your twin flame to the mighty I am presence. And thus the visualization for this feast of light throughout this year shall be for all of us twin causal bodies as above, so below. Your causal body below, the twin flames above, and then the great cosmic interchange, the whirling of the spheres as the two become one and the mighty river of life connecting the two the two seeds of light, the point of the mighty I am presence, the union of that God consciousness. And we realize never here, forever there. Never here in time and space, even if we are seated beside our twin flame in the very flesh, never is there union through the consciousness of time and space, but always the union in eternity. What is eternity? but our own causal body of light. That is where we find eternity and eternal cycles. And that is where we find our blessed twin flame. It is possible to humanly know the twin flame and yet to be worlds apart in vibration. As long as we dwell in flesh and blood and time and space, that timepiece will continue to say, never here, forever there. And the forever there, of course, creates the longing, but we should never forever be longing, but we should omit the procrastination, cut the ribbon of time and space and realize that longing is an absence of awareness of God where I am. There is no need for us to wait in time for the eternal union of love. There is no need to accept death as the open door to life or union or love. But our change of consciousness can make 
all things new. The great moment of our hearts, the excitement and the thrill of this realization is instantaneous oneness with a God self, instantaneous oneness with a twin flame. And when we come to that point of realization, by the very logic of the word in our midst, by the logos of our hearts, there is a healing of all conditions of consciousness. Name any condition that burdens you and tell me if it is not healed by the dissolution of the sense of time and space, if it is not healed by the entering in to the white fire core of your mighty I am presence. All that stands between you and your God flame is not karma, is not this world and all that's in it, is not the astral plane, but your sense of time and space. Eliminate time and space and all there is is God, here and now, in eternity. This is the wondrous path by which I am God taught of Lanello. It is the wondrous path of joy. Understanding and living this joy here and now, we can keep the eternal vow of love. A very simple and sweet message. Behind the message is the full dispensation of the mantle of Lanello. He is wearing a fiery white cape and a mighty cross, a ruby ray cross of a bishop of light in the very center of his form beneath this white cape. And upon his head he wears the hat of the bishop, white and ruby, all trimmed in gold. He comes then representing the church universal and triumphant. He comes showing us that it is by the blood of the lamb represented in the ruby ray and by the very body of God that we eliminate time and space and that we ascend into octaves of light. Think then of the burdens you have borne. Think of the cross that you bear between yourself and your twin flame. And think again of the healing love of this great union of the whirling spheres of light. To come apart for an evening and to contemplate this great love of the spheres, we can say to ourselves, is anything too hard for the Lord? Is there anything that we know about in the four reaches of cosmos or the earth itself that cannot be resolved because the great causal bodies of our own God consciousness as Alpha and Omega, as our own twin flames, are won by the mighty initiation of the flow of the figure eight of Lanello's causal body. Thus he comes to bring to us a mantle of light. He comes to remind us of faithfulness to the Holy Church church that means community of the Holy Spirit, church that means we are truly one and we are wed together by this body and blood of Christ. It is a celebration of the marriage of the Lamb, the eighth ray celebration of our, our union with the eternal Guru. And so this joyous celebration is for your oneness and your marriage, the marriage of your soul to the Lamb our own beloved Lanello, each of the ascended masters having passed the initiation of the Lamb, come into this great cord of the shepherd and his sheep. We rejoice to be sheep upon the hillsides. We rejoice to be called by Lanello. He is carrying the shepherd's crook, symbol of the authority of the word and we delight in his word. The joy of the presence of Lanello. What can I tell you of this joy? What can I tell you of his heart? I think of all of the moments that became minutes and hours and years, and 12 years of time and space have already become eternity. 12 bands of the causal body and the unfoldment of his magnanimous heart. What can I tell you of my moments with Lanello? There is very little that I can tell because all that I know of him I have already become. 
and therefore to remember segments in time and space is very difficult. But to impart to you the flame that he has placed in my heart, to give to you the great joy and the great strength, only to tell you that 12 years before I met him, I was not what I am now. Now I am the fusion of his great love. And therefore, not having seen the before and the after, most of you do not realize the real meaning of wholeness in my life or the full flowering of the grace and the love, the mercy and the wisdom of his heart. I love the words that he wrote in our song to Mighty Victory, which speak of the atonement through wisdom. The wisdom of his very heart is the atonement of sin. I have seen the wisdom of Lanello be the very purging, the very forgiveness, the very transmutation of sin and the sense of sin. What is sin? Incomplete self-assessment in God, dwelling in the maudlin or the sentimental or the mundane instead of into the highest octaves of light. The very presence of his wisdom would be a brilliant fiery light that would expose the lesser consciousness. And before even the very process of the confession of sin or of the atonement, we would find that wisdom's flame itself would banish the night of a lesser consciousness, a lesser view, the smallness of mind, the selfishness of the lesser self. Wisdom as the atonement for all of our self-ignorance all of the ignorance of the great God self. This is my experience with beloved Lanello. To be in his presence was the very banishment of all that is less than the Christ. Such an understanding of forgiveness, such an understanding of tenderness and love by the very loving of my soul and of all souls, the buoying up of those souls in light, when one stands in the shadow of a mighty oak tree, such as he is, and such as he was and ever shall be, one stands in the presence of a cosmic consciousness that have lived through all time and space and all eternity. Standing in that presence, one was raised almost like the standing of one's hair on end. Like a silent magnet, the entire being and consciousness would be enfolded and raised up. He would not have to speak, but merely by his contemplation upon God, I was raised to a higher sense of God. Merely by the sound of his voice or of his footstep, I knew more about the ascended masters moment by moment by the mere attunement with the voice of Lanello singing in song or preaching the word, I could feel my soul being attuned by the finest instrument of tuning, the finest tuning fork of cosmos, to the inner delight of God. Before I even knew the meaning of the person of the guru, I was swept up in his mantle before I was ever tutored in the outer sense and the meaning of the guru Chila relationship, I was already one in this figure eight flow by his magnanimous heart. He did it all. He extended his himself. He extended himself and enfolded me until I was already in the divine union of this figure eight flow. It was the reaching forth of the Lord Jesus Christ unto the disciples. Leave your nets and come, and I will make you fishers of men. The transfer to me of his mantle has made me the lover of the souls of all people of light upon earth. It is a very intense and personal love, and I know that it is Lanello's love loving through me, all of you, and all of the souls that we haven't seen in the flesh who are there as real, as fiery, as full of fervor as we are. I see them and I feel them in every country 
I know every one of them personally. I know them in spanning the octaves. I know them because he has caught me up in his mantle into his own causal body of light. And the army of the Lord is mighty indeed across the face of this earth. And by the rolling over them of the violet flame and through and under them, we find that they are being cut out of the astral plane and the burdens are being lifted. And they are raising up their heads and they are affirming that God is in them too. The loving of Lanello, of the people of light upon earth, is known to me because I understand how he loved me and loved my soul. And in the understanding of the love of the master for the disciple, or the twin flame for the twin flame, one perceives perfect love. And so I perceived perfect love. I suppose that is the greatest gift, to have been able to observe perfect love in manifestation. And yet, hardly to be able to tell you an incidence of perfect love, because the manifestation of that love transcended time and space. It was the in eternal enfolding of my being here and now in a mighty spiral that was his mantle. It was the tenderness of the heart of God upon his face, in his heart, in his presence. And as I saw these 12 years unfold, I saw the initiations of these 12 lines of the clock from 1961 until 1973 in my life. And I saw that he would never spare himself if there was need to instruct and tutor my soul to discipline and to point out what was unreal. It was an ongoing striving of his heart to see to it that in a single 12-year cycle he might impart to me all that he was and is and disappear to mortal eye to accelerate and to intensify the light and to continue to be right where we are. And I saw the fervor and the intensity of his heart in doing this. The Ascended Masters and Lanello saw that I needed and he needed a 12-year experience for the transfer of the flame, the flame of the messenger, the flame of our causal bodies, and the flame of responsibility for the activity of light. I would like to point out to you that he and I have been in training for many, many lifetimes in the service of God. I would like you to give yourself the opportunity to have a sincere and dedicated striving for a period of 12 years and to realize that from the heart of Lanello this evening, he tells you that it is practically impossible for any ascended master to give to you what you need for your life's mission in less than 12 years. And that is 12 years of intense service and intense melting of the human consciousness and the human karma, whereby the individual becomes a portion of the manifestation of the law of his guru and is able to take up a certain responsibility for his guru in the world of action. There is no way that you can try on the Ascended Master's teachings for an hour or a month or six months and then look at results in your life and say, this teaching is not for me, this teaching doesn't work. When you think of the immensity of the soaking out by the violet flame, by the aura of the Master, of eons and eons and eons of time and space consciousness recognize that because we have spirals of time and space consciousness, because we have a flesh and blood vehicle that must absorb the light, that spirals and cycles are required in time and space and these are lawfully divided by the pendulum of the great clock. And so it is necessary Therefore, in considering the great path of the ascension, let us realize, 
and give God the opportunity for perfect love to mesh in the fullness of our beings. The perfect love of the, of the Master, the ever-present Guru Lanello, will not leave you alone. I am here to witness to this, that his wisdom does atone. He will not leave you as he would not leave me. He would wrestle with me. He would see to it that every conception of my mind and heart would be perfect, finely tuned, every misconception be purged by wisdom, by sacred fire, by love. I can witness to you that I have been loved and loved and loved through the very process of one so dedicated and so determined that he would not let me go until the fullness of his light could flow into me and be maintained in the physical absence until my physical vehicles, the four lower bodies, could contain the essence of himself whereby he no longer needed to be physical, for he could therefore be physical through me and therefore know that my soul would yet be secure in his vibration and in his flame. The same is true for you. The ascended masters are very determined gurus. It is up to us to be very determined, Chilas. It is up to us to be willing to have the human ego broken. It is up to us to be willing to come back for more and more and more of that light. And we are always learning when we put ourselves at the feet of the eternal gurus, always learning from beloved El Moria, who spoke almost as in a stream of consciousness through Lanello, his commentary on life. What you hear me tell you in the manifestos, this is the mind of Moria already fused with the mind of Mark when I, bet, when I met the two of them as one. And who is the mind beyond El Moria but the great divine director and mighty Hercules? And so we find that coming down the chain of hierarchy, each of the masters with whom we deal gives to us this mighty benefit of their fusion in love by the great gurus who have preceded them. And this commentary on life, the very fine mind of El Moria, of all experiences I can tell you, it is the greatest experience of life. And so to follow Lanello wherever he would go was the greatest joy of my heart. And to be able to impart to you who are truly the living upon earth, the essence of his flame, must be the greatest opportunity and the greatest joy of all ages upon ages of my existence. For I know that Lanello is the elect one who cometh. I know he is the one sent. I know he has a very direct tie to every soul of light upon earth. I know he is as fiercely dedicated to liberating each one as he is and was with me. I know that you can pull upon his mantle any hour of the day or night and speak to him and tell him of a need, person or planetary, and there will be that need fulfilled in that answer. I know that you have the greatest opportunity in this year, the eighth year of his ascension and this quarter of Summit University, to come into alignment with his great causal body. When you think of the opportunity of listening to the dictations of the ascended masters through him, you are watching the very process of this figure eight flow of two causal bodies fused as one in those dictations the mighty causal body of Lanello and of the Ascended Master. And each combination is new and ingenious and all its own, not only because of the different master, but because of the, of the different constellations of stars and astrology and the configurations of life. As the cycles turn, as the spirals turn, so there is that very special release. And each one is a full cup of the body and blood of Christ. And as we drink it, we are that much more fused to our own God self through Lanello and to our own twin flame. And to think that we have these tape recordings, to think that we can listen to this rich voice, 
the voice of the century, to think that we can travel upon it into the eternity of his causal body, this vast causal body of Lanello through which we can journey. Why, it is the greatest joy and victory and opportunity that could ever come to the people of a planetary body. Never has there been, never has there been such an opportunity. And so those of you who are beginning to understand the meaning of the fusion of heaven and earth through the presence of Lanello, know that you have a guru, that you can hug, that you can hold on to that mantle and that robe that you can talk to about the most mundane and simple things as well as the most complex laws of the universe. He could explain the stars and he could understand the most human of our problems and he could point out all of the plots and ploys of the fallen ones to make us indulge in our human consciousness and detract us from the path of life. He knew so well the wiles of the serpents and he could see so easily how these serpents would come upon any of us with a wrong thought, a wrong idea, a wrong vibration, and he would be the great challenger of that serpent consciousness. And he would not lay the blame upon the serpent, but he would lay the blame upon the individual who was entertaining the serpent. He would not give you a scapegoat. No, he would insist that you would slay that beast and that dragon and realize that when you are aligned with it, you are as guilty as the serpent itself for allowing that pollution to flow through your magnificent chakras of light. Orifices of the stars are your chakras. And he would have no patience with that energy that would be the defilement of your body temple. Knowing well, knowing so well, that he as the prophet would take his leave would enter his ship and would go on to another shore. He was very concerned to leave us with the full intensity of his determination that we should not be spotted or blemished by the energies of the world. He knew the consequences of entertaining sin and the consciousness of sin. He knew the consequences of self-indulgence, self-concern, selfishness, and an absence of co-measurement with El Moria. Co-measurement, the ability to understand the individual and his relationship to the backdrop of time and eternity, space and the cause. And if one could not see oneself in relationship to this cause, one would lose the perspective of life and very easily be taken down into the lower vibrations that cloud the mind and bind the heart to that which is not correct in the eyes of God. And therefore, each day and each hour, we have in our hands a single flower as the reminder that the soul that is our own is a flower, and it has a relationship to the cause of the Great White Brotherhood. We stand in relationship to that cause, and the cause will prosper each day if we are playing our role, if we are in alignment with the Buddha, and the cause will suffer when we are not. Living one's life for the cause is a way of life of El Moria and Lanello, the Darjeeling masters, and the friends we know and love so well. For the life of that cause upon earth, we are here. We sense it within, but in moments when we lose sight of it, through fatigue, through physical problems, through various conditions that we pass through, it is then when we are in danger of that error which will eclipse from our heart and mind the most noble deeds and the very penetration of light that brings us to the heart of the souls we are serving. We are servants of God in the souls of his people. No greater servant of the soul of humanity has ever lived than our own beloved Lanello and all of the ascended masters who preceded him. Servants of the souls of humanity. To have an ever-present awareness of them is the gift of the ever-present guru. 
Behold, I am everywhere in the consciousness of God. And God's consciousness is in the soul of every child of his heart. There I am. There you are. Have you lost your sensitivity to life because of the grossness that comes upon you through the sense of sin, through giving in to temptation? The great penalty of giving in to temptation is that grossness that comes upon the consciousness. We see grossness across the face of the land because of insensitivity to life. It is the karma of abortion. People become more and more animal-like and less and less sensitive to the soul. They cannot feel the hearts of one another. How can they have compassion for those in pain, those in sorrow, those who have an incomplete perception of God? Lanella would always go after those who had the incomplete perception of God. He realized that the state of mourning was the result of this incompleteness. He wants us to be able to feel the hearts and souls of our brothers and sisters throughout the world. When we are one with him, he takes us to their souls and hearts. He takes our dynamic decrees to their souls and hearts. And there's a bursting of fire, and it is the flower of hope. Lanello would always bring hope to every disciple. He would teach us the hopelessness of self-indulgence. That is the hopeless state. And he would leave us feeling hopeless as long as we were self-indulgent and force us to throw off that self-indulgence to once again realize that without hope, we suffocate. It is like the air we breathe. Hope, then, that one can rise in a burst of joy and new creativity and a discovery that one can truly contact the mind of God through the point of the crown chakra and that that mind of God is the open door to eternity to the fulfillment of the spirals of our own causal bodies here on earth. How do you bring down that enormous storehouse of light and love and wisdom? How do you pull down the causal body and unwind it? Why, it is through the mind of God. The mind of God contains it all. The mind of God gives us access to every other ascended master, every other causal body. Do you need to know a certain fact of cosmic law? It exists in someone's causal body, in an ascended master's causal body. By letting the mind of God be in you as it was in Christ Jesus, you can go straight to the very heart of that matter and bring it forth. Are you looking for the answer to an equation in life or how to create a new fuel for the people of this nation bowed down by OPEC? and the multinationals. The link is there. It exists in the mind of God in someone's causal body. And all saints and children of the light have access to that light, to those facts and figures if we will pursue it. Isn't it joyous that we can sharpen the mind through academics, through education, through the tutoring of the heart? through meditation, through dynamic decrees, and we can feel the limitless capacity with which God has endowed us, that we are not limited to some human standard of an IQ or of a brain potential. We can transcend it. God can work through us. God doesn't even have to tell us how he's working through us. He can bypass the smallness of the lesser self's self-conception and there create a miracle of life or a blessing for the people without even the awareness, the total awareness of the mind of God that has worked through us, but by the very path of our devotion, it is so. This is why miracles have manifested on earth through the saints who are even uneducated. They became a catalyst for a whole planet to dip into the mind of God. The very Renaissance itself was the result of the saints who preceded it and lived during it. Those saints of light were mighty candles. 
and white right where they stood the causal body was they knew the fusion of the ruby ray they were on the path of the figure eight flow and many of the ascended masters today have been through that path over and over again in many incarnations literally they have held up the earth with their own causal bodies fastened to their heart chakras it's the most exciting realization of the celebration of one life and one ascension to realize how much expansion of God consciousness can be where you are now and how much more you can give to life if you will exceed the limits of time and space and the human potential that has been defined for you refined for you until you are all compartmentalized and you think you know the limits to your own growth and to your own ability and Mark says baloney <laughs> baloney sausage <laughs> you need to break the barriers of time and space who has compartmentalized you who has told you that you can only do certain things who has told you that you cannot be everywhere in the consciousness of God I was I was while I was yet in physical incarnation I was everywhere in the mind of God and you can be also more diligence more striving is needed walk the path of sainthood I walked it and I have never regretted it lifetime after lifetime the sacrifices were nothing compared to the great gifts of God gifts of wonder perception wisdom graces compensations for being a member of the great white brotherhood on earth by my causal body you can walk in my footsteps you can wear my mantle and you can have the experiences which my soul had but you have to want it more than you want the indulgences of self and your self concerns and all of your projects and plans that take up both time and eternity and leave you with neither for the fruition of life you have to want God as they say more than the drowning man wants air you have to want God and the guru more and more because the temptations of life will be there like death and taxes the only thing sure in life is that temptation will be there and what you must ratify is that you in God will be there to meet them you celebrate Lancelot I am not satisfied the only celebration of Lancelot is that you become the knight and you become deft in the wielding of the sword even the sword Excalibur that can be passed to you by El Moria when you have passed certain initiations with your own sword as the science of the word and therefore have that very special initiation of the king unto the knight dealing then the death blows to unreality in the mind in the feelings in the physical plane this must become the celebration of Lancelot as I have said before this is not a joke and many men make light of the era of Camelot they do not realize the intensity of the initiations that we had then and that are here again in this hour I would see the sword and the pen become one so that the flow of the word from heart and head and hand does converge at the point of error to unhorse the fallen ones to unseat the scornful the haughty and the proud and to instate the little child
the child of the heart that is without guile. The child within each and every one of you is the holy innocence that is never without the inner sense of God through the five secret rays. These must be pursued as five wave lengths, as five notes on the piano. Play then the five black notes that they may be heard. Play then five notes again. Become sensitive then to gradations of consciousness for the secret rays are between the seven rays. Gradations of consciousness, blendings, and then the entering in to the white fire core of the blending of the flames. The secret rays, when meditated upon, give to you heightened sensitivity. Five physical senses cannot in any way give to you the full experience of God. Those five senses, so-called, are in actuality apertures for infinite awareness, leading to the perception, the feeling, the penetration of the very nuances of God's consciousness by degree. And this soul sensitivity is centered in the seat of the soul chakra. Would you feel the cosmic rays of the stars? Would you know the vibration of Sirius? You can. I say you can, if you will. But love must purge you of grossness, of cruelty in the spoken word. Love must purge you of those receptors that still hear the demons of the night and their vanity and their profane words. Love must purge you and silence all dissonance in your consciousness. Love that glows as a fire for what? For God, God, God. Love that is a fire for friend and neighbor and for the child that is not seen. Who is the child that is not seen? Is it the child in the womb of the cosmic virgin? It is the child of your own heart. The unseen child is the one who is profaned upon earth. Therefore, let the child appear. Let the child appear within you as perfect love. You can know all things. God has never withheld from any of his sons his perfect wisdom and his perfect love. You can aspire to become sages upon earth, teachers of wisdom, but only by love. Deliver me from the brittleness of those who memorize the word without the heart of devotion. Deliver me then from those who take the ocean of God's love to the depths of psychic thraldom 
and the entertainment of phenomena. Deliver me then from those who are more interested in doctrine and dogma than in the plight of the soul itself. How we love the flame of love bursting for joy in your heart and as love for one another. Blessed hearts of peace, open now and let God release through you his perfect love. Then will you be my disciples indeed. How can you sow the seeds of my word unless you wrap them in the swaddling garment of love? The seeds cannot grow unless they be enfolded in love, enfolded in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit sealed in the cosmic cross of white fire by the angels of the ruby ray, sealed in the light of Alpha and Omega in the body and blood of Christ. Yes, seeds of my heart and wisdom, seeds of my discipline, must be enfolded in love when you pass them to another and sow them in the soul's consciousness. Let us realize that in this hour there is the opportunity for geometry, for a great magnitude of the multiplication of God's consciousness in the earth through you, and the dispensation comes forth from Alpha and Omega through my causal body to you and to your twin flame. If you will establish the tie in this hour, the dispensation the dispensation to multiply and break the bread of life through conversation, through holiness, through communication, through the writings of your heart, the sendings of your soul, of the sacred fire to a waiting world. Yes, beloved hearts, the sense of limitation and the pendulum of eternity's clock. When you hear the pendulum, hear then the swinging of Alpha and Omega to and fro, and not the segmenting of your life into the limitations of time and space. Let the swinging of the pendulum and the chiming of the great bell in the cathedral of the Lord Christ remind you that you are indeed in eternity and that you have, so to speak, a sphere of eternity to unwind here below and that all that prevents you from unwinding it now is your own sense of limitation. On this, the eighth anniversary of my ascension, beloved hearts, I am consecrating you to the initiations of the eighth ray. I am consecrating you to, ge to a geometric and spherical expansion of my heart, to a mighty work of the ages. May you understand the meaning of my love and the essence of my heart that I transfer to you. All of those things which must be subdued in character, in plan, and in infinitude can be so if you will it so. You need not fret and entertain self-limitation anymore. You need not conceive of yourself in sin. For no other conceived you in sin. I am breaking up the calcification of the mental bodies as you allow it. I am shattering the confinements of the mental belt of a planet, 
I am shattering the confinements of a mental belt of this planet. Burn through legions of light, hosts of the Lord, fiery salamanders, burn through, shatter then the pole of death over the minds of God's people. Oh, expand eternal mind of God by the ruby ray, by the purity of a mother's heart, by the purity of Serapis Bay. Expand, O oh mind of God within these souls. Expand, O oh hearts of fire with threefold light. Burn through by the light of my own God victory. To whom else shall I bestow it? Where else shall I go but here to anoint you with the holy oil of victory? I would read to you the words of my own master, dictated through my own beloved earlier in this century. from the leaves of Moria's garden. I have already told you about the inner understanding of languages. Write down this legend. It was once proclaimed that a certain high priestess could understand any language through the inner consciousness and wonderful results followed. Envoys from far-off lands spoke to her in their own language, and she understood them. Thus there was created a legend about the eternal language. But crowds of people wished to be convinced about it. Many foreigners were brought forward, and the priestess was led down from the eighth floor in spite of her protests. But nothing was manifested for the people, and the strangers reiterated in vain their speeches. Thus was ruined one of the best possibilities. Yet it would be possible to put this into practice by studying the quality of aura, because this, the aura, is the bridge of both bliss and contagion. The ability to understand even one's own native tongue depends not upon the ear, but on the contact with other centers through the aura. Therefore, it is better to say, I have understood, than to say, I have heard. Therefore, as to the question of aura, its color is not so important as is its inner intensity. By way of this legend, I bring to you then a most necessary discussion of the officer of the messenger and of my own beloved, whose vehicles serve me well. By the aura as the bridge, there is both bliss and contagion. The messenger as the mother occupies the eighth floor. Beyond the seven rays, the plane of the eighth ray, is the plane of bliss. At that point of bliss and of communion, the words of the ascended masters are spoken through the cosmic Christ to her heart. 
and translated from many languages of angels and of the Spirit of God. Descending then to the crowds at the lower level, the ground floor beneath even the seven rays, the aura of the messenger that is both the sending and the receiving station, no longer in bliss, is sensitized to the auras of the mass consciousness as well as the untransmuted on the path of life. This contagion then becomes a most necessary preoccupation, for while there is contagion of the aura, there must be intense intention upon the aura by the messenger for the transmutation of that which is the contagion of the human consciousness, lest it defile the holy of holies. And upon entering once again the eighth floor, bring contamination to that level. Thus, my beloved, it is necessary to understand in this year and in this celebration that it is indeed possible to ruin one of the best possibilities. The possibility of having the messenger for the purpose of being the messenger. The possibility of having the messenger for being the conductor of light and healing and teaching. Of late, then, we are most aware of the necessity of the messengers tending to the administration of this activity and to the personal needs of chilas throughout the earth who require counseling, understanding, clearances, and invocation and to many dire conditions in the earth body. We also understand that at the point of the heart of the messenger, the activity of being the translator of the word on the eighth floor and the consumer of the contagion on the ground floor is not possible. There is not the possibility for the simultaneous activity except except the messenger turn over to me and the cosmic Christ, the ministering to the flock on the very ground floor. Then she may retire to the eighth floor and carry on the transmission of the word so needed for your path. This then becomes a divine interchange of causal bodies whereby I, Lanello, as the ever-present guru, become more physical in your midst, more apparent, more seen, more there when you need the friend and the counselor. What shall I do in this calamity? And the messenger who is physical becomes more etheric about her father's business. Thus, it is time once again to remind all that there is a mighty work of the ages to be done. On the eighth floor and on each of the seven floors where you dwell when you are in your own Christ consciousness on the ray of your current initiation, you have positions on one or more floors, offices that you fulfill. And in that level of the Christ consciousness, you are upholding the very possibility, the very best possibility for there to even exist the eighth floor and the integration of the word. And thus, you all have the experience of being called to the ground floor, away from the planes of the seven rays of your own ordered service. And you understand that that which calls in the crowds who demand proof of the law and the teaching is always human questioning, doubt and fear, records of sin, 
disease and death, all of them encased in a consciousness of time and space, all of them wrapped in the parenthesis of this very time and space which is unreality. Thus unreality wraps time and space, and in the midst of it there come the endless stream of the human questionings, questionings of God. Will he or will he not help me? Will he or will he not save my marriage or save my family, save my job, save my finances? Deliver me from the oppressor in my business. Resolve my own incompleteness. Will he or will he not? Fear of the absence of God and the aloneness on the path. Doubt that I am the ever-present guru to assist you in attunement with your own Christ mind for every healing and teaching and every decision that you must make. And then the endless stream of records on the conveyor belt of the mind, the recordings of demons and discarnates, the recordings of sin and the sense of sin, the diseases that come and go, passing to the four lower bodies, passing into the flame, I hope, if you are diligent. The wrestling with the very tempters of death who would steal you from your course before your life is filled. These are the dire calamities that are brought to the messenger day by day. And out of the mother's heart, out of my own magnanimous heart, we have provided the answers to the questionings. We have provided the call that compels the answer in one's own heart. Now I say, beloved hearts, let those who have put on the mantle of the Christ be willing to descend from those seven floors of service, to tend to those who fear without the presence of the personal physical shepherd, and let, I implore you, the messenger fulfill the role of her office. For we would deliver the mandate of Sanat Kumara. We would deliver the teaching of the hour. Therefore, beloved hearts, minister and be lovers of humanity. Understand that all have passed through the canyons of doubts and fears in other years. That the astral plane is filled with these, filled with souls and lives shipwrecked and needing the lifesaver of the rings of your own causal body. In prayer and in personal love and conversation, therefore, help one another. But let that help be distinctly from the person of Christ and not the personality. Let it come in the form of praying together for the will of God. Let the messenger not have the shutters closed to keep out the awareness of all things happening upon the earth. Let the shutters to the windows on the eighth floor not seal out the light or the interchange, but in Portia's name. Let there be opportunity for us to speak the very words and deliver the very teachings that would provide the answers to the questions of many. Blessed hearts, this is the dilemma of the cycles of this planetary home and this system of worlds and the vehicles that you wear. We transcend the dilemma. We provide spheres of eternity for each one. We provide you with your own mansion of light where you also may be undisturbed in your ministration and service. Understanding, I ah, indeed, that the requirement of your path is truly to minister to the sheep of my flock. Dear hearts of gold, there is yet a story untold. I would tell it through the heart of the messenger. As she has risen with me to the point of the I am presence, and the level of the guru. Will you not rise 
to the limitless identity of yourself as sons of God in the center of your own Christhood and therefore be able to administer unto life, to administer this activity. This is why I have come, for the cycles of our causal body demand it, and therefore I hurl unto you the coiled spring of gold, whereby there is accelerated within you in this hour coils of your own causal body and my own, that you might greater fulfill in the maturity of the word all of the demands of these little ones who come so early and so new to the path of life and must be taken by the hand and led through their own footsteps, through the labyrinth, through temptation and trial. They must know that there is a human voice that will speak, that will comfort, that will listen, that will care. Be that voice and allow our voice to be the mouthpiece of God to you for them. Will you accept my mantle in this office, beloved? Yes. Then, dear hearts, I promise to you teachings that you also require, teachings that must come in answer to the unanswered elements of your own life, questions you have not spoken, for you have not known that there remain questions on your own path of the ascension. You do not come in fear and doubt, but you come yet in incompleteness, gaps in the divine knowledge, the gnosis of the mysteries, gaps in awareness of the path of attainment. This is the teaching we would give, and it overflows spontaneously from the very fountain of life. There are questions that you know not how to ask, for you lack the awareness of the missing links to your own causal body. Those who come to you with fear and doubt, their pleas, their plaintive cries, you who understand, for you have already been there and can give them compassion and firmness and strength. You understand that we are in this relationship to your own soul's evolution, and we anticipate your need before you cry out, before you come to the edge of the abyss. We have the teaching, we have the way. But it will not provide for you the answer unless the messenger can deliver it before the hour of the meeting of the precipice of life. Yes, we would have you for 12 cycles of your causal body. We would have you for the refinement of the five secret rays and the seven rays. We would hold you in our heart and then we would send you far and wide to be giants as sons of God among men replacing the counterfeit giants of the Nephilim. Yes, we would have you in your own cosmic Christ consciousness by and by. But do not be as frogs that leap into the air, but land nowhere, but back upon the lily pad, the selfsame pond of life, do not leap beyond your initiations or your attainment. For what you know is what you can demonstrate in the very face of the foe that comes to tear down your light. In the silence of your heart, in the love of friends and community, you may demonstrate the path. But can you demonstrate it in the very teeth of the oppressors of my people? This is the testing. Therefore, do not assume attainment you do not have, nor allow the force to tell you you do not have the attainment that you do have, or the access to the attainment of my own causal body. We, as one, 
have all that we need to slay the foe. Therefore, in your forgetfulness that we are one is your weakness and your defeat. You must never forget that I am there and that I care and that my mantle is upon you and that you walk with the stature of my own God-free being. In this lies the victory, for truly I am here and I am there. Let the fairest flower of my heart, then, prepare for you the most sumptuous feasts of wisdom, love, that lead to the power that you require to complete the task. Hearts of gold, it is the power of God that we would transfer to you once you have learned how not to transfer it to the fallen ones, they are determined to take from you each morsel of light. By the infiltration of the mind and its manipulation, by its absence of concentration and effulgent joy. Therefore, learn the way of the keeping of love and wisdom and power will be transferred to you in your hand. Until it is so, remember the image of myself as described to you this night. And remember the symbol of the shepherd's crook. Remember that I am that power until it is bequeathed to you. And you may call to me, Lanello, Manifest your power here for the defeating of the foe, of light, of the word, and of the brotherhood. Is power lacking? Is there a vacuum in your soul? I will fill it. I will release it. I will seal you in my mantle, but I cannot transfer to you the authority for that power or its use until you demonstrate unquestionably your own nobility, your own integrity, your own honor, and your ability to meet every trial and test and temptation. The stakes are high. We cannot afford to have our power put in the hand of a Nephilim. By your human sympathy, your ignorance, your naivete, or your flirtations, temporary though they may be, with the world and its condition of consciousness. Therefore, demonstrate the path of sainthood with Serapis Bay and see what is the power of God upon earth in this age. Every ascended master stands ready to act as I have vowed to act and to be with you. But I have a prior claim, for I am the closest of them all to your own messenger. And through this manifestation of our wavelength in the physical octave, by the perfect polarity of our being, I am able to transfer the light of Alpha and she of Omega of our twin causal bodies, even as you have great access to the mighty I am presence and causal body of your own twin flame by the polarity of your being. Therefore, I filter through, my beloved, the causal bodies of the entire spirit of the great white brotherhood. Therefore, I come to you and I am the ever-present guru, understand the meaning of how close I am to every one of you, how physically close, and you have but to speak the word to bind the demons that would tear you from your virtue and your God flame. I seal you on this ascension day, February 26, 1981. I seal you in the heart of the eighth ray, 
and I say, Occupy till I come the positions of Christhood in the seven stories of my causal body. And let none be so high or mighty that they cannot descend the stairs of my own Christ consciousness to tend the beggar at the gate, the littlest child or ragamuffin, or one in need, or one who is so burdened as to appear unworthy. No, indeed, there are none who are unworthy, lest they make themselves unworthy after they have heard the preachment of the word, the delivery of the teaching. You cannot prejudge unworthiness, no matter how blatant the face of unworthiness may appear. Preach the word, deliver the fire of Saint Stephen, let them react and by their reactions prove their unworthiness and then shake the dust from your shoes and be gone. Remember this, no one is unworthy until proven unworthy. Therefore, preach the word to the righteous and the unrighteous and call upon me to roar as the roaring lion that truly is one with a lamb. For I will roar and let them roar. They will see what I have in store. Let the meek and the humble Chila open his mouth and let the light be spoken. Let it be accepted or rejected. Let the consequences be mine as I give them unto my Lord and my God. My Lord El Moria, my God, the mighty I am presence in the heart of all life. By the secret rays of my hands, O mighty cosmos, touch all upon earth. Let the sendings of sacred fire from my heart be then the contact with hearts of gold and with the betrayers of our word. Let the secret rays of our heart be for love that raises up and for judgment that casts down. Even so, let the mighty be cast down from their seats of judgment of the children of the light, for they have not the authority of the sons of God to judge righteous judgment. Therefore, they are bound in heaven and in earth by the word of the living Son of God, Jesus Christ. By his grace, I am. By the flame of his mother, I serve. By the heart of my own beloved, I am with you always, even unto the victory of the eighth ray and your own ascension in the light. My beloved, speak the word in love and forever be at peace. Forever there, forever here, I am that I am.